I'm Devavani Chatterjee, and I am reading from The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie. Gordy taught me how to study. Best of all, he taught me how to read. Listen, he said one afternoon in the library. You have to read a book three times before you know it. The first time you read it for the story, the plot, the movement from scene to scene that gives the book its momentum, its rhythm. It's like riding a raft down a river. You're just paying attention to the currents. Do you understand that? Not at all, I said. Yes, you do, he said. OK, I do, I said. I d really didn't. But Gordy believed in me. He wouldn't let me give up. The second time you read a book, you read it for its history, for its knowledge of history. You think about the meaning of each word and where that word came from. I mean, you read a novel that has the word spam in it, and you know where that word comes from, right? Spam is junk email, I said. Yes, that's what it is, but who invented the word? Who first used it? How has the meaning of the word changed since it was first used? I don't know, I said. Well, you have to look all that up. If you don't treat each word that seriously, then you're not treating the novel seriously. I thought about my sister in Montana. Maybe romance novels were absolutely serious business. My sister certainly thought they were. I suddenly understood that if every moment of a book should be taken seriously, then every moment of a life should be taken seriously as well. I draw cartoons, I said. What's your point, Gordy asked. I take them seriously. I use them to understand the world. I use them to make fun of the world, to make fun of people. And sometimes I draw people because they're my friends and family and I want to honor them. So you take your cartoons as seriously as you take books? Yeah, I do. That's kind of pathetic, isn't it? No, not at all, Gordy said. If you're good at it, and if you love it, and it helps you navigate the river of the world, then it can't be wrong. Wow! This dude was a poet. My cartoons weren't just good for giggles. They were also good for poetry. Funny poetry, but poetry nonetheless. It was seriously funny stuff. But don't take anything too seriously either, Gordy said. A little dork could read minds too. He was like some kind of Star Wars alien creature with invisible tentacles that sucked your thoughts out of your brain. You read a book for the story, for each of its words, Gordy said, and you draw your cartoons for the story, for each of the words and images. And yeah, you need to take that seriously, but you should also read and draw because really good books and cartoons give you a boner. I was shocked. You should get a boner. You have to get a boner, Gordy shouted. Come on. We ran into the Reardon High School library. Look at all these books, he said. There aren't that many, I said. It was a small library in a small high school in a small town. There are 3,412 books here, Gordy said. I know that because I counted them. OK, now you're officially a freak, I said. Yes, it's a small library, it's a tiny one, but if you read one of these books a day, it would still take you almost 10 years to finish. What's your point? The world, even the smallest parts of it, is filled with things you don't know. Well, that was a huge idea. Any town, even one as small as Reardon, was a place of mystery. And that meant that wealth in it that smaller Indian town was also a place of mystery. Okay, so it's like each of these books is a mystery. Every book is a mystery, and if you read all the books ever written, it's like you've read one giant mystery, and no matter how much you learn, you just keep on learning. There is so much more you need to learn. Yes, 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 Gordy said. Now, doesn't that give you a boner? I'm rock hard, I said. Gordy blushed. Well, I don't mean boner in the sexual sense. I don't think you should run through life with a real erect penis. But you should approach each book. You should approach life with the real possibility that you might get a metaphorical boner at 
any point. A metaphorical boner? I shouted. What the heck is a metaphorical boner? Gordy laughed. When I say boner, I really mean joy.